Lesson 2-3, Proving Theorems. So we're back into proofs here. We, we really spend two full lessons on proofs. The first one was kind of a preliminary. Um, and don't worry if you don't quite get them. It's just too, still too basic. So we started proofs yesterday. And the whole reason we do that is so we can start proving theorems. Uh, we number our theorems by units or in unit two and the number of theorem that we have so far. This is called the midpoint theorem. And it is so basic and obvious that you're going to say, well, duh. But the point of it is to give you practice in how a proof works. So the definition of a midpoint is segment AM is congruent to segment MB. And that's a good picture down here, AM to MB. Well, duh, I mean, no problem. The theorem is going to say that this distance is half of this distance. And again, you're saying, duh. But we got to start somewhere with proof, so we're just giving you practice. So this is what it is. So here's the setup. Given M's a midpoint. M is the midpoint of AB. That's our given. And I've given you a skeleton proof, similar to what you'll see in your first quiz. And actually, most of the proofs you'll see for the next three to four weeks until I finally think you're ready to jump in the deep pool and swim on your own. So here it is. Same thing. AM is congruent to MB or AM equals MB. And I just told you this one. So hopefully you know what it is. And if you want, you can stop the recording now and see if you can fill out the rest on your own. But we just said that's the definition of midpoint. This drives people crazy, so make sure you're clear on it. Theorem, it's half. Definition, the two pieces are equal. Theorem, the smaller segment is equal to half of the whole segment. Definition, the two pieces are equal. I know, makes no sense. It's too easy. Now we've taken segment AM, pardon me, AB, and broken it into its pieces. Whenever I see that, if an angle's broken into two pieces that add up to it, or a segment's broken into two pieces that add up to it, I immediately say, oh, that's uh, segment addition postulate. And then we have that AM equals MB. So we're going to take MB and change it over to AM. So this is substitution. Notice I've already taken out the rest of it. Property of equality. No, I'm not going to write that. That takes too long. I just call it substitution, and that's more than sufficient. I'm only erasing it because I wanted to put that in blue. I like switching up the colors so it's easier to see what's going on. So now we're really done all the hard work. This is substitution. This is just probably an extra step that we didn't put in. We'd say properties of algebra or something. AM plus AM is 2AM. Properties of addition, multiplication, it's the same thing. Now we divide both sides by 2. So that's property of division. And if you just want to write division, that's fine too. And now it's the same thing on the other side because AM equals MB. So we can sub in here, put in MB there, and it's just another substitution. Notice I write out substitution. I don't just write sub because sub could be subtraction. And it would be confusing, so I have to write it all the way out. That's really it. Again, you're probably saying, well, duh, or that's too easy, or I can't follow how you did it. Don't worry. I'll give you some of the steps. If you can come up with the reasons, you're doing well. Same as the first. Definition of a bisector. Two congruent angles, and that's what those mean in case you haven't seen that before. That means that this angle... Those angles are congruent. I 
I'm not going to go through the proof. It's the same one, but I'll give you another time to do that. Maybe it's a warm-up or a homework problem. And you would just follow along the previous proof and break the angles into their components with angle addition postulate, substitution, division, substitution, you're done. And this is a good time to do some review on proofs because you're getting there. Uh, what can we use as reasons? That's the right column. Well, we can use given. We can use properties or postulates. And if it's a property, that means it's algebra. If it's a postulate, that means it's geometry. We can use definitions. And finally, we can use these theorems we just proved today. Now, some of you may have done geometry before. You've read ahead in the book, and you would say, oh, I can use this theorem. No, no, no. Theorems that we have proved so far. And in case you were wondering, these proofs that we've been doing have been called two-column proofs. I mentioned that earlier, but nobody listens to me, so that's okay. There's other proofs. Paragraph proof where you just say, I do X, I do Y, I do Z, they all match up, so on and so on. We'll do something called an indirect proof later, which looks a lot like a paragraph proof, but actually it's a very specific format. That's it. Get going on all this. Keep practicing. This is new and challenging stuff for many people, so give it a good shot and see where it takes you. Good luck.